Hello, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop for another shot at this radio. But first, I'm going to read you a little poem I wrote about this radio. And then we're going to talk about it. There once was a radio called Ultradyne, whose unique mixer made it top of the line. Through a gauntlet of hands, and with the best of plans, they turned it into a Frankenstein. That's right. So although this radio says Ultradyne Superhead, my conclusion is this is nowhere near an Ultradyne radio. It definitely has parts in it that have come from an Ultradyne or a similar radio and all these coils here are all from Ultradyne type radios and to a large degree this kind of looks like one and maybe originally it was one but just like my poem I think a lot of people have done stuff to this and the result is well I'm not sure what the result of this actually is to be honest with you I did take the time to make a circuit diagram I'm just gonna throw it in front of the camera here for a minute there it is so that's just me tracing out all the wiring and most importantly trying to get these coils sorted out here studied this for a while didn't have to study it too long to realize this cannot be an ultra dyne radio and really what would make it an ultra dyne is the specialized oscillator mixer circuit that would be in this radio and it would involve two tubes one would be an oscillator tube like most radios probably in this radio it's the tube that sits here produces a local oscillator fantastic feeds it up into a mixer tube which in an ultradyne is called a modulator the thing about the modulator tube is that it has no B plus applied to the plate it gets its quote B plus from the actual oscillator signal itself every one of the tubes in this radio is being fed with B plus there is no tube in this radio that does not get B plus there is no way that there's a modulator tube arranged in this radio. So, okay, so if we just kind of let go of the idea that it's an ultradyne with this fantastic system in it, it doesn't mean it isn't a radio and it can't work. It doesn't mean whoever put all this together didn't have it working at some point. And it doesn't mean I can't make this thing work like a radio. Also, I'm just going to have to get creative because uh, the original design is gone basically it's not here and I'm not about to try to uh, reorient everything to produce <clears throat> excuse me a true ultradyne ultradyne I'm, I'm not going to make any attempt at that so what we got here though is we have we have a nice IF strip with tunable IF transformers all of them seeming to work <clears throat> it looks like the IF frequency in here could be almost anything <laughs> The article I read last night suggested it might be 120, so I'm not the only per 120 kilohertz. I'm not the only person who's kind of scratching his head over what is the uh, IF frequency through here. I think it's 75 kilohertz myself. So we have an IF strip with amplifiers. We have an oscillator which appeared to produce a signal, produced a couple of them, but produced an appropriate oscillating signal uh, that would lead to a uh, difference frequency of 100 or 75 kilohertz what's uh, what's and then we have the, the audio part which we know isn't working uh, well because these transformers are shot but that's really beyond the radio part of the thing uh, so it doesn't really matter in terms of making this receive stuff <sighs> uh, there was one more thing I was gonna say and I just slipped out of my head here right if we do look for briefly at the circuit diagram i don't want to dwell on it it's hard to look at <clears throat> there are some interesting things on here if we look at this three coil deal two outside coils and one that's inside here that rotates okay the inside rotator one is shown here on my diagram here and the wires from it well one of them goes to i guess you could call we could call this the negative rail this is not as simple as you might think this is the negative side of the heater supply uh, 
separate from the beat plus supply which is fed in up here not quite separate you'll see in a minute there is a, a connection between them so so the other wire now the one that's going somewhere goes all the way out look it goes out to the antenna transformer here this is my lousy a picture of a tuning capacitor those are supposed to be the blades there R is a rotor scatter <coughs> excuse me so this guy is connected between here and we'll call this the negative rail and the capacitor is connected between the coil rather the coil is connected between look 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 I'm trying to find out this wire here through there to ground so I'm trying to figure out what this capacitor is working against you think it's working against this coil is it working against this one is it working against uh, you know what it is this is in series with this and this thing is kind of paralleled with the two in series. That's really weird. And so you have the antenna signal in this coil amongst these coils. What in heaven's name for? The only thing you can think of is you've got a, a powerful oscillator going here using this tube. And the oscillations are affecting this coil. This is a little bit like an ultradyne now and heading it out towards the front end maybe trying to pass a local oscillator through here pass it through the rubber tire or resistor pass it all the way up to the grid of the first tube but that's not normally how it would get there normally this is not at all how this would be done this is kind of a maybe like another kind of radio where they take the local oscillator and just join it with the antenna signal on the grid of the first tube and then somehow there's some mixing that takes place maybe because of non-linearity here they also discovered a difference between these three IF transformers, or as, the, as they're called here, uh, ultraformers. These ultraformers, and this one is slightly different. Uh, I measured a different input or different primary resistance here. Sure enough, it's a little bit different. The main difference is that the two coils in these are closely coupled. The two coils inside here they're loosely coupled they're separated by some distance <clears throat> someone opened up these things and looked inside discovered that they were more loosely coupled uh, transformer here hooked up essentially to this transformer and 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 and, and this one and then you know electromagnetically this one you know. <laughs> the whole thing's hooked up here is this really sensible what what, what I've got here in front of me shapers I don't know Look at this control. So this is supposed to be doing the bias. I am going into this whole diagram in detail now because I kind of need to. So what is this variable resistor, right? This is this guy. What What is it doing? So it has five volts across it. Where is he getting that from? So we follow one leg up. It goes to one side of the uh, heater circuit. And you follow the other side this way right past here oh it doesn't go it doesn't go to the rail it goes up to the B minus so if you follow from B minus downwards you get to this point this is a rheostat poorly drawn rheostat its current setting is zero resistance that's what I was trying to indicate here so in effect this B minus line is tied in this radio right now directly to the minus of the heater string <coughs> excuse me if you were to advance this a little bit I guess that would cause a voltage to develop between the heater the heaters and whatever's hooked up to B plus or something like that it would do something I don't really know what it would do to be honest with you is it in there for a good reason or is it something stupid and what is it <coughs> excuse me how stupid is this or did somebody really work this thing out and, and this is actually a functioning radio if I can just just get all the parts to connect properly <clears throat> 
going back to this, so, so we have, <coughs> excuse me, essentially, because this is set here, this essentially has 5 volts across it from the supply here. So 5 volts with a slider, so you can select out the voltage you want to apply to this line right here. This is actually a wire, I kind of showed it physically where it's located. And if you notice, uh, if you notice, it's kind of hard to see what I did here, because I scribbled on it. It's tied to the plate. Is that the plate? 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 Yes. Tied to the plate of each tube. This is not what I thought it was. Have I got something done wrong here? I thought this was going to the grid of tubes. Maybe I've got something wrong. Let's take a look here. So what I'm showing here is off of this, off of this line, which comes over onto this wire here, which is running through the center. It's tied to the um, this is the secondary side of each one of these IF transformers. my mind here. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find my mind. Get my mind back. This guy's going over here. See, I mean, this may not make sense, and this is why I'm having trouble absorbing it. It really doesn't make sense what's going on. So, maybe I've got myself turned around here, too. Grid and plate. Grid and plate. Grid and plate. Plates are joined by this wire. Plates are connected back to this rheostat uh, potentiometer. And the potentiometer is selecting between 0 and 5 volts. Is it really? Is that really what it's doing? So this outside leg comes definitely to the heater rail here, to the positive side. And this side here, this is the weird one, comes out comes along here, so hard to see when you're looking at it. There's a Y joint or a splice here. But the wire does continue on underneath all the way out to here. Where you see I'm using it for a, a, a B minus connection point for a lot of stuff. If you can think of this as the, the ground point, then the this thing is grounded on one side. But the thing is, there's more than one supply coming in here, right? This is the weird thing about this. There's DC supply to heat it, and another DC supply for plate voltage. It's, and then there's an association between the two because the heaters are used as the cathode. So you, you can't have these two power supplies completely dissociated in here. And the association takes place, I believe, through this rheostat. And the way that it's done right now, this is this is down at zero resistance. So the relationship is they are they are they are commonly grounded. I, I guess that's the word for it. Common ground. I guess that's a good word for it. Common ground on the two power supplies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm finding things to say, but I'm starting to wonder why I'm saying any of it at this point. Um, so aside from, from little little ditties here that are going to show up as I continue working on it, what am I trying to do now? I was trying to make this, you know, in the long run, work like an Ultradyne. And I've been busily studying Mr. LeCoultz stuff and everything, but that's not going to help me with this because there is no modulator tube, there, there's no opportunity to turn this into an ultra dime. 
How do I really know that? How do I really know that um, there is no tube here available to do an ultradyne non-plate voltage tube situation? I, don't, it, it, I can't see it. It's just not possible. So that being the case then, we take the local oscillator, mix it with the incoming antenna signal somehow, and then just fire it into the first two. Fire it in, not into the, yeah. Try, try, try to mix it in the first two. So only hope is to make this mixing occur in the first two. And the tube has to operate in some nonlinear fashion in order to, to splay out harmonics. And that may happen just from just from piling in signals onto the grid. It just may be enough. And and I think really what happened here is Mr. Lacault figured out the first truly efficient mixer circuit. Remember, these are triodes. And you know, you're limited with what you can do with a triode. Uh, later came uh, better tubes, um, uh, pentodes and things like that, which were used for mixing. And it became, uh, you know, problem solved. But in this radio, the problem is still here of trying to use triodes to generate a mixing. And, and, and then the whole thing about the Ultradyne is uh, Mr. LeCult figured out a way to do it, and it's a really weird way. And I wish I could make this radio do it, but I, I'm, uh, that's not where we're going here. Uh, well, and some simple things I can just try and see what happens. Uh, operate the radio, try to get this local oscillator signal onto the grid of the first tube, along with an antenna signal, and hopefully something will come out down here. <laughs> You'd hope there'd be enough rejection all the way along here that all that would be left is the IF signal down here. And it, it could start out very, very weak. It's bound to start out weak. All this stuff, just forget about it. This front end tuning for now, forget about it. How do I, how do I uh, insert a signal into this grid? I just hook up my equipment to it like I have it now. I don't think that's the best way. Maybe while using test equipment, yeah, I can do this. I would actually try to receive something. I have to do something different about about this because I need a high impedance antenna, you know, at least a few hundred ohms. So there's other elements in the circuit here I have not figured out at all. I have not, not been able to figure out at all what's going on with these coils. I really haven't concentrated on it. There's a capacitor right in here doing something. That's this one here. But, you know, I'm, I have to be a little careful here that I don't just become completely overwhelmed and I, I, I lose the fun factor. Uh, fun factor has been pretty good till now, but the picture has changed dramatically. So the rotating coil in here is superfluous because the wire from it is just going nowhere. It's just laying here. It leaves the two outer coils, which I think are interacting, grid and plate for the oscillator. Don't know, just guessing. That's what it is. And that's what makes this guy oscillate. If it's still working. The oscillations, well, they could be picked up by this coil in the middle. I could. And then they could be presented anywhere on this wire to anywhere in the radio. It's coming right back to the front end, getting ready to go in the grid through this resistor. And then they have the uh, Ste Steinite uh, coil here, boosting the antenna signal a bit. They have the boosted antenna signal going in with the uh, uh, oscillator signal, heading for the grid of this tube. And then who knows what happens on the way out. Yeah, the oscillator signal has got to get from here. So this is really out of control, isn't it? And maybe this was to try to bring it into control. Give it a little bit of... Uh, shoot. Uh, this resistor here is maybe to give it a little bit of control from the oscillator. So 
So the, these two connections were made to the secondary of the coil here. Now this one's carrying the oscillator signal from a pickup coil in here. So we have an oscillator signal picked up and you can adjust it I guess by moving this, this, this coil a little bit. That, that would be the adjustment, not, not so much the resistor. And you mix, you mix in on the grid of this tube the two signals, the local oscillator and the uh, and the uh, incoming signal. If there's a 100 or 75 kilohertz signal, it's going to find its way through here and carry on down. Why, why, why can't it work? As long as there's some non-linearity somewhere, some amount of mixing is going to happen. Some amount of products are going to come out. Look at all these amplifiers here. Sure, sure, really good. Yeah, look at all these amplifiers. Look at them. Let's move the camera back just a wee bit. Maybe it'll make things better. Okay, so then how do I do that? Um, pretty simple, I think. We, 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 we put a clip lead just from here to here. I'm going to be firing the signal out on my antenna here in my house, but I don't think anybody's going to be too worried about it in the neighborhood. Um, and then we got to hear it. We got to hear it, so I have to have my uh, signal tracer. Okay, I got an idea what I'm doing. <laughs> That's taking me a long time. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this guy up. We're gonna see if I can make it work just the way it is right now. Okay, I think I'm ready to to operate here. Um, first stage is to turn on the heaters. Get these tubes warmed up. So I have to break the connection here. Okay, and then bring on the power supply. Check the voltage. It's good. Uh, this is reading B plus, I believe, from before. Yep. So we'll, we'll keep using this. Uh, B plus is about 50 volts, 45 volts. Pickup coil here for my SDR radio so we can see the local oscillator because that's the next stage. Okay, ready to turn on the heaters. Just a little awkward. If anything explodes, yikes. There we go. Heaters on. I'm going to raise the B plus and watch for the local oscillator to come on. Let's, I'm going to flip the uh, Flip over to uh, the SDR. Let's do that. Okay, so here's the medium wave band here. And I think a local oscillator is going to appear when I crank up the B plus. So I'm going to start doing that. So flipping it on here. Well, something's appeared already, and the B plus voltage would be next to nothing. In this radio right now it's like you really wait a minute here didn't have that voltmeter on let's just give the voltmeter a chance to warm up and I'll tell you what the so B plus is zero how did that show up okay so I'm gonna raise the B plus upwards and watch what goes on here we go on up going up. Look at that. So now you see three new signals and some existing ones have gotten weak. I see another one. Four, four signals have shown up. So there's two there that appear orange. Uh, one at just below 900 and one at double that just below 1800. That's the primary oscillations. What these other things are, I don't know. And plus, the oscillation is strong enough in my SDR. The SDR's own AVC cut back the received signal level of all those other weird things, whatever they are. Let me tune the radio here and just make sure the... And we're doing this with all of 10 volts on the plate. I'm going to turn the tuning thing. Look at that. Beautiful. We have a powerful... But well... On the SDR, it looks like a powerful local oscillator. I'll set it to a million. Now, uh, so that's good. So we don't need to look at the SDR for now. Let's go back to the radio. 
Okay, next thing is uh, we should be hearing something, but we can't unless I turn the volume up here. It's pretty much a hum, and that's all. So 10 volts at B+. Plus. Um, the input signal is at 800. We think the I have frequency 75 kilohertz, so local oscillator should be at 875, all things working, but it's up at a million. So we'll raise the input frequency up to, well, let's just raise it up. I mean, if we hit the mark, we'll hear it. We'll hear it. If we hit the mark, now um, that's not a reference to Mark, who continues to pump me up with more information about the Ultradyne radio, but I'm afraid I'm on my own now, Mark, because this is not an Ultradyne. Here we go. I got a pretty good imagination when I'm doing things like this. So. Let's go back now. Didn't hear a thing. Pretty, pretty low power. So now we're sending what would be normally uh, to a normal radio. A pretty strong signal on the antenna. Make sure the volume's up on my uh, tracer. Okay. So what we're hoping here is that some mixing is taking place in the first tube and that mixing is going to result in a oh, 75 kilohertz. Let's let's give it the let's give it the works. This is it. You work now or this this is not an appropriate approach. Nobody home. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this at around well we'll leave it there. I'm gonna tune the radio itself. Oops, a little bit of focus stuff happening there, right? So this is moving the local oscillator around. Anybody hear what I hear? Yeah, so that tone that you can barely hear is coming out of the uh, signal tracer. So there it is. The radio is receiving. Real? Or we need to look at what's in the IF right now. So the way we're going to do that is so we're going to take my high-tech coil here we're going to place it on the last IF transformer where the signal will be strongest. Trying not to cause a accidental short here. There we go. Now, we'll look at the SDR, see if we can find something happening around 75. Pillars way down here in, in this area is what we're interested in. Um, and the, uh, so the, the radio is listening to, how do I know for sure it's listening to that signal generator? Oh, I gotta change the modulation frequency for a moment. Double check and make sure we're listening to the signal generator. Yep, yep, no doubt about it. Very quiet, but it's there. Doing a line. Oh, why is there a blip on the. Uh... Oh, okay, so probably. Uh, I don't know, I don't care. Stay focused, Jim. Stay on track here. So we're looking at the what's happening in the IF. I'm going to tune the actual radio. Change the local oscillator frequency a little bit. You can watch right around the 75 kilohertz area on the far left there. Okay, maybe 
there's not. Maybe it's uh, also it's possible it's 170. I saw 170 written somewhere. Okay, so I'm seeing something of around 250k, which is uh, right above the, the letter A in the word long wave. Let me tune through again. So the whole idea is you see something travel in there. Boy, this, I'm going to have to zoom in on this. Right above the E in wave. And then it disappears. Oh, it's still going. Oh, it's still going. It's way up around 400 now. Well, it's possible. It's possible that I'm seeing a very, very wide IF response. That, that it's not very sharp. Sharp rating here, though. So right above the E now in the word wave, you see a peak. You also see one above the V. Ignore the one above the V. I don't know what that is. But the one above the E is the actual IF signal. And it's at two, around 270. Around 270. 270 kilohertz. So what happens if I hit this rated with 270 kilohertz? Does it race right through the IF? That's worth a try, you know. It's definitely worth a try. So I'm just going to leave it looking at the SDR. I'm going to change the uh, frequency here down to around 270. Oh, we're right on 270. Right now. 270. So I'm going to vary the signal generator. I don't see anything moving. I'm looking for anything happening here. What if it's uh, what if it's lower? So what would happen here if I hit the IF frequency? We should hear the signal generator straight through the IF. So I'm gonna, just going to go from 260 downwards and listen very carefully. It's 240, 210. 180, 170, 130, somebody, come on. Not a thing, down to 95 and not a thing came out. Oh, but I think it might be 75. I can get down there. Okay, let's go down to 75 here. Signal generator is a little unstable now. So that's in the 75 region. I don't hear a thing. Now, is there anything showing up on the SDR? So I can just look at the waterfall display, which is basically a memory of what's been going on. There's nothing. There's nothing happening whatsoever. Oh, this is a complete. Uh, Doing something stupid here. Um, did I, I got the wrong wire hooked up. Nope, nope, nope. Why, why no signal being picked up by my coil and my SDR? Let's move it around. Maybe, maybe it's stronger in some of these other coils. See the oscillator going up and down as I'm moving the coil around. Wait, I should get something. I got this rate on the basically the output of the signal generator. So we should get a strong oscillator from the radio, which I think we can see. Yeah, there it is. And we should also get a strong signal from the signal generator, but so low frequency. Let's go up. Up. 300. What happened to the, uh, why is that thing zigging around? 
what happened there? Let me let me watch this time. I'm changing the band on my signal generator. That's what that sound is. So this is 300 kilohertz coming through. I don't see anything. Flip band change. Now it's 977. Yeah. So we're seeing the actual signal from the signal generator, which is fine. We can see the local oscillator and we can see the signal generator, we can see the distance between them. And, uh, well, okay, that's good. Let's put one on a nice number, put the local oscillator. Why am I mixed up here? I thought that was the signal generator. No, no, I'm, I'm wrong. We'll put the local oscillator. What did that mean? The local oscillator in a million. Now, it's 25 kilohertz below is the signal. Is that, is that making sense there? Local oscillator in a million. Yeah, you can see it there, 975, exactly. And we're hearing something. It's getting, where's that coming from? So, I'm not sure what we're hearing right now. Uh, it's getting louder and louder. What is happening? <laughs> What's happening, man? Uh, okay, let me turn, turn down my signal. I think it's a feedback. Yeah, let's just keep the volume from going too high. We'll keep the R naught below one. Okay? Think about that. If the R naught goes above one, the feedback's gonna get louder and louder and louder. We're kind of mixing, you know, the virus thing and the radio thing together here. There it goes again. Oddly enough, I waved my arms above the radio and this started. I'm waving some more. It's like it's like it's like magic. What is going on here? Yeah, something more interesting is happening now than what I was doing. So you can see that. Just gonna turn it up a little bit. Turn it down. Try to get an R, R naught of one. Okay. Nope. That's me moving around. Okay, I usually do the crazy stuff at night all alone. I don't know, usually. Yeah, that's you know what it could be? It could be me just moving my head through the different uh, sound uh, interference pattern that's here in my shop. I'm just moving my head around through it. That's why I'm hearing different effects. So as I'm moving my hand, I'm moving my head in fact. Ooh. Oh, what's going on here? Well, wasn't that a whole pile of nonsense? Looks like, looks like, looks like, I don't know, looks like something was going on with this. Oh. Yeah. So, I got a microphonic uh, tube in here, probably, and it is probably vibrating with the machine's vibrations, and that's probably the feedback. Just kind of a mechanical thing right inside here. Nothing to do with the radio. Okay, so where, where are we at now? We are totally lost, totally confused. Heard something coming out of here. Let's get that happening again before I... Uh, so, uh, so, so right now we're sending in a signal uh, just under uh, megahertz, and we'll see if we can tune it in. And the answer appears to be no. Let's go back to the uh, SDR revealing. Okay, local oscillator is going on. We're still doing this with only uh, 10 volts on the uh, plate. I'm going to raise it a little bit. 
just a little bit. So now we're looking at not quite 25 volts on the plate of these tubes. So the question is, get right on top and then we hear it? We don't hear it. We heard it before. And you know, it was not a heterodyne. It was the actual modulation. And now we're not hearing it. That's because I monkeyed with the signal tracer. It was better when the signal tracer was ringing. there but it's just there it is so I'm hearing the audio heterodyne between two RF signals I believe that's what I'm hearing now so we got two RF signals very close together just you know a thousand Hertz apart well wait a minute is it heterodyne yes by heterodyne I mean as you vary one frequency the difference becomes changes between the two frequencies you hear that you hear the difference changing so that's that's not at all what we're after that's not at all what we're after just moving the pickup coil around to see it that's near the uh, oscillator look at that eh? that's just barking out a heck of a hey there's that oscillator adjustment thing which would be, I would guess, is adjusted for maximum right now. Let me uh, just put this pickup coil back safely here. Whoops. Okay, so I'm going to uh, vary the position of the pickup coil, or the coil. I shouldn't call it a pickup coil. We just see what happens here. Oh, it made a difference. didn't make a lot of difference. The pickup coil is best positioned in perfect parallelness with the other coil. Pickup coil, the rotating coil, and the other coil. So no dramatic change there. Uh, you have a powerful oscillator and it is going somewhere else in this radio too. I'm feeding off that rotating coil So I'm taking a, a feed from the rotating, call it a pickup coil here, it's picking up the local oscillator and firing it back here weakly into the input. But there's other outputs coming from here. Where are they going? And, and, and what's that all about? So I haven't figured this part out yet. This is the middle coil, this is the lower coil. So middle coil and lower coil middle coil is attached to the grid of the oscillator tube. The other coil is to the plate. So you can see how plate current and here's the tuning against this this against this coil I think. Tuning against this coil. Yeah, because they're connected here. So you have the capacitor tuning against this coil this coil carrying the plate current and the plate signal, plate signal getting back into the grid coil and getting back in. So here, here's the oscillator here. And you adjust the frequency by fooling with this. And it works great. The signal coming out of here, where else is it shared? So we follow this guy up. It's capacitored to the, to the negative line ultimately is the same negative as the B minus because of the setting here. It doesn't go there though. It goes up 
to here, which is the B plus. So you have B plus. Yeah, that makes sense. B plus down through this coil over to the plate. Plate has B plus. That's a very simple oscillator. The output of this oscillator appears to be nowhere except here. This appears to be the only output. And the output is directed back. It ultimately, originally, uh, directed back through the uh, stein steinite. I need to introduce this capacitor and the steinite back into the circuit and attempt to, to, to feed this all through here. I don't know about the resistor. So that, that's the objective. Steinite back in. Mr. Steinite. Now the thing about the Steinite, which I never finished on, was uh, well, what about this capacitor? What's the use of the Steinite without the capacitor? Well, it still represents an intended transformer of some tuned quality. It, I mean, the capacitor's there. It's, well, it's not connected. It's not connected. Not connected. You can see what it was connected to. It was connected to here and to here. Why wouldn't I reconnect it? Well, I don't know what it's even doing. Why wouldn't I arrange it so I can reconnect it? I should bring wires up and have them out of here waiting so I can experiment. Now, this this thing, is it supposed to be... Oops, oops, careful, Jimbo. Let's turn off this stuff here. Okay, that was a B plus being turned off. And I better... Where'd the heaters go? Where did the heaters go? Heaters went away. I knocked a wire off. I did. Knocked off the wire over there. So hang on. I gotta kill the power supply here because the short is possible. There. Luckily I'm using a well protected power supply, so a short circuit wouldn't mean anything to it. So just the wire came off way over here. Okay, back to the steinite. So so my, my wisest move is to prepare it to be used. Bring bring some wires up. It's very odd. There's solder here, but not here. And there's no remnant of a wire here at all. There's somebody carefully removed them. But this plate is hammered on with nails, and I just pulled it apart. The nails are still there, heads and all. So nobody ever took this off, unless somebody somehow pulled out these nails. That's my uh, DC power supply, uh, just capacitor just fading out in it. Well, I think that's that's the deal. This should be restored. Oh yeah, yeah. Last thing, if uh, if if this were flat, then then this would be all pushed up, and this is screw here. It's pretty powerful. So is the idea that these plates are kind of splayed out, sprung out, and then as you crank it down you squeeze them a lot? Or is the idea that they're squeezed down pretty tight all the time and you're just varying that compression? Because you like this is built to destroy itself. This screw comes out far enough to drive the base off. Well, why would they make it like that? They wouldn't make it like that. And then there's a whole pile of screwage up here. It's doing nothing. This, this thing's been bent terribly. It was never bent originally. It was nice and flat, laying nice and flat. Don't break the coil. It's just a matter of kind of crushing it together. Yeah, those are mica sheets there. Great big mica sheets. Well, as long as I can access it, we can do all kinds of experiments with it. But if I bolt it right back in, then we're not going to be able to do experiments with it. So really rigid wires. I mean, they don't get any more rigid than this. So what can I do here that's going to allow me to fiddle with this? You know what? Mounting it, mounting it like this would be better. If I can mount it, mount, I can actually mount it like this. If I can mount it like that, or just install it like this, let it lay, lay in here. Just let it lay in here, kind of like that. Hook up some wires. Don't do anything too serious, because who knows what's going to happen. 
got a plan. So I started doing the uh, work. You can see I put the extension wires in to catch the capacitor, and in doing that, I had to tighten and loosen those two screws. And when I tightened and loosened the two screws, I discovered that in fact the screw heads pop up through the top here and are soldered to the wires that need to be connected to. It is connected. This capacitor is connected through the screws. And how did I not break those connections? Because I rotated one of those screws around and around. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, there's a lot of excess wire under there. So, looks like my uh, extra connections here are needed. I'm going to continue with those. That's all. Just thought I'd kind of show, show, you, show you the situation as it develops. Okay, I'm taking an even closer look here. So, as it turns out, uh, this screw, which I did rotate, is not connected to the wire. You see that little blob of solder there? That used to be under here on the top of the screw head. Uh, it's not me. Who, it, it's been off the whole time. This other one, the screw head is still soldered. You can see the blob of solder in there on it. So it's hung on. So that's what's going on. Okay, I'm just about ready to try something here, but I really don't have a lot of hope it's going to work. So the uh, uh, let's call it the primary coil or the antenna coil is being fed from these terminals from my signal generator here. Then the other coil which is underneath, we can't really see it. The two leads come out here. I've attached them to clip leads. One clip goes to this big line coming from the oscillator. So the oscillator signal is going into that coil and coming out and heading to the grid of the first two. So all that the signal generator is doing is energizing this coil. Capacitor underneath. The capacitor underneath is not connected. This, this lead has to be connected to here for the capacitor to come into to, uh, to effect. So it's not in the circuit right now. Yeah, let's, let's give it a go here. Uh, put this back on the oscillator. Look at it, and the DC, oh, that's right, i got to fix the wire that came off over here. Okay, let me get the radio operating, and then we'll, we'll see what happens. So the radio's running now, and uh, let's look at the SDR and see about the local oscillator. So I'm going to tune the radio, and we'll watch if anything moves on the SDR screen. That's a little odd. So I'm just tuning, 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 and then at some point, up comes that. That is the signal from my signal generator. For some reason, as I turn the oscillator control, it's now working like it did there before, more like just a tuned circuit. If you watch way out on the right side, I'm just tuning it back and forth, you can see it's, it's got some kind of resonance effect. What happened to the local oscillator? So I have uh, hooked up a wire here. Uh, I'm going to disconnect it and see if the oscillator just suddenly comes back. And oh, for crying out loud, it's the same mistake. No B plus, no B plus. Put the wire back on. No B plus, no B plus. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, that's up a little loud. Okay, B plus going up. I put it up to about 20 volts. Oh, look at that oscillator there. Hot diggity dog. Okay. Now, uh, we should be listening. That's That hum is coming from my tracer. Volume turned way up. So the local oscillator, we, we, we let's see, let's just get this thing right here. I'm going to put my signal generator to 900. No, I'm not. I'm going to put it to I'm going to put the signal generator on a million. Now we're going to tune. And we're going to make the local oscillator past the million about 1.1. We should hear it if everything's working. Listening, listening. Oh my god. Oh my. 
this radio just worked. Let's come back. Why, why twice though? So you, you can see the signals it's picking up. Oh, why, why that one was silent? Somewhere. Uh, what's going on up off the screen there? I'm going to shift the whole screen here to the left. Did you see there's another oscillator signal way up here? There's probably another one. Let's see if this is at 950, uh, double 950, get 1900. So if you double it again, we get another one up here. Oh yeah, there's one here. Many, many, many signals. Let me tune the radio just a bit. Yeah, wow. Hey, this radio's really working. <laughs> so let's not worry too much about the extraneous local oscillator signals, but what that will do is if there's a convertible frequency up there, it will convert it and it will come out the IF. Is this really coming out the IF? Is this really working? Is this really working? Wow, we should skip to an antenna right away. But let's not. I'm punching a huge signal in here. I'm going to cut it back. So now we have a moderate signal at a million hertz being fed into this radio. We'll try to tune it. Let's tune it. hearing it now. Oh! I thought I heard a little peep. No peeping. up to a, this is a moderate this is a, a still a realistic antenna level signal so uh, local oscillator 900 um, it's picking up a signal at a million that's roughly 75 kilohertz away let's go above So this radio is completely image insensitive, in, 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 or image sensitive, I guess would be the word. So this radio is liable, liable to pick up a lot of stuff <laughs> over and over. Um, hey, we should put an antenna on it at this point for sure. So uh, I have to run down and switch on my antenna. Let me just turn this hummer down a little bit. And then we're going to hook it up. Those are my grandparents up there. noticed in the last dozen or two videos that uh, I'm wearing pajamas all the time. You know, that's the fault of my wife. My wife told me, just leave your pajamas on during the day. <laughs> and I started doing that. Shame on me. Okay, we're hooking up the antenna here. So, leave the radio running while we do this. Signal generator off. My uh, tracer is ready to to uh, oscillate. Yeah. Okay. I bring up the antenna. Here it is. This is going to an outdoor antenna of some sort. That's about most I'll say. Let's put it around like this. What do we hear? 
a lot. Oh, there's something there. I'm still hearing this. I'm hearing a slight uh, resonance. Yeah, I got, uh, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I don't have to explain it. Okay, let's see what we can tune in here. <laughs> I'm not very hopeful. Really, uh, we should probably look at the SDR because it's a little like looking at the dial. So we, we think I think it's 75 kilohertz away from multiple oscillator. Oh my God, it's working! It's working. That's interference I hear regularly. Okay, come on, station. So what we're going to do, so we're going to put this up around here, around 760, we're aiming for, you know, we should aim for 640, so we should put it about here. Oh, oh, what popped up there? What's that? It's popping up right around 610. Now that could just be SDR nonsense. So we'll set it where I think it's going to convert to 640. Now, it's time. We'll leave it like that. Time, time to fiddle with the uh, tuning on this thing. So we have the antenna coming in. Uh, this is a really stiff wire here I used. Unfortunately, I need a clip lead. This is really lousy to do this, but let's just try it. Okay. Hey, I'm a better antenna. Really? I'm the antenna. Very sensitive as you go up. How did I become the antenna? How did I become the antenna here? So I've so I'm basically connected to the coil underneath, which is then connected right here. So is this the same thing as doing this? Is this clip lead any good? I soldered all my clip leads, but for some reason, I still have trouble with them. the length of the wire doing that? What happened to the great uh, antenna effect? This is the method that uh, Lacolt used to discover his inventions, goofing around. The goofing around method. Well, this radio appears to be quite sensitive at this point. At least for noise. You know, I just have such bad camera. I can't, I can't reach to the uh, knob to 
camera where it was. Stick it up here. You can still see because it's plastic. All you got to do is receive one signal and I will be happy. Down the volume there. It's dropping sensitivity, so it has a real sweet spot. Oh, another one. I'm not sure how to interpret all this. Hey, where'd you go up here? What happened? What happened to it? That sounds like a scrapey thing, doesn't it? It doesn't sound like reception. We lost the reception here. We were cooking with gas and then all of a sudden... Hmm. The SDR, see if the local oscillator is still. Oh, yeah, it's still there. Hey, the radio's coming back. Uh, it's pretty loud. We maybe accidentally charged something up and it took that time for it to charge, like a capacitor, to charge to go away. We, we maybe we drew, uh, pushed the tube in the cutoff. I'm really good at imagining I'm hearing things when I'm doing this. So. I hear a voice. Could be just in my head. Voice is telling me to go watch TV. Now, why won't it produce an actual radio signal? So let, let's give it one um, out of here. Take the output of that and we'll hook it up to a a loop here and try to transmit through the air to the radio. So it's tuned somewhere, who knows where. Let's try to find it. That's a little disappointing. I'm more closely couple of these. Two coils here. Okay, let's do this. Uh, look at the SDR. Figure out what frequency we're on. What, uh, what so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually set this to video got very quiet, so let, let's go down where it's noisy. Set it to 800. Local oscillator 800. Reception should be around 725. Around 725.
There it is. Seven seven twenty six. Okay, so we can set this radio to six forty. Six forty would require um yeah, so that verifies 75 kilohertz on the, on the IF. So to get 640, I go 75 kilohertz higher. That's 15 above. That's 715. That's right on where we are. That didn't make sense, did it? I just did. 715 on the uh, local oscillator, Jim. Okay, I'm just watching the screen myself. I don't need to get exactly 7.15, just bear with me for a second here. Great upon the money. Well, it got quite, quite quiet there, didn't it? Something going on there. Okay, so if there was a 640 signal, we would hear it if we could. Uh, so let me fool around with the antenna connections here to see if we can make something happen. Take the ground off. That didn't do a thing. That did something. So get right on the grid. Oh, it's really going. That's, that's a strong signal. Coil open in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna so so what we're doing here is we're just feeding. <laughs> so it could be whatever's on my antenna that makes that sound is, is kind of disabling this radio. adjusted the uh, volume control here. Oh, the whole time we're doing this. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's go back. I just figured out how to turn the volume up on the radio. Duh. We'll go back to here again. Start here again with feeding the signal into this coil the way we think it's supposed to go. The way I think it's supposed to go. That's my finger touching one of the wires. Boy, she's she's hot. Okay, let's go on here. That didn't help much. Ooh. Give it a moment. Tune this baby. It's getting more sensitive every time, I think. Hopefully, it's not picking up its own interference. Okay, new idea, new idea, new idea, loop antenna, loop antenna, new idea, loop antenna, good idea. Okay, I'm part way through here, I have the uh, loop antenna right there. I'm not tuned yet, but it's probably tuned good enough. I have one lead connected, unfortunately it comes up to this kind of connector and I, I, 
I can't find my, my my joining cable, but we'll just put up with clip leads here. So I actually have the center to here now. Put the outside. It's a loop antenna, so you got to have two connections. Well, that's interesting. The radio went quiet there. On the other side. <laughs> How am I doing that? Somehow I become integral to this radio. Nope, the magic hand not working. <laughs> okay, I am a factor. Loop antenna's on. The radio that I is it. It's just. I'm just going to double check the uh, where we're tuned to. Oh. I think that's the station. Okay, now, so lots of things to tune here. I'm going to go tune the antenna. What is going on? This is oh, weird things going on. I get the impression I don't have the loop actually connected as a loop yet. Is it uh, possible these these this just doesn't Well, uh, <laughs> just move around and it's causing something to happen here. I'm going to just feed the loop antenna right onto the grid here. Do away with the coil for a moment. So I would want... Let's, let's take this right off. There, that's a little quieter. Won't be quiet for long. So I put one on the negative. One on the negative one on the ground bus, let's call it that, a return line or whatever you want to call it. There we go. Okay, and the other one onto the grid. Grab your, watch your volume here. That's pretty loud. That's pretty lousy. Wow, this coil seems to really help out without it. Now, mind you, what I'm hooking up to, the loop antenna, is one of these, basically. Uh, up on the volume. Tuned to here. Local oscillator disappear. Uh, oh no, I can see the local oscillator moving everywhere. So th this connection has just silenced the input to the uh, 
but that, that's okay. So let me set this back where we want it. Seven, right about here. Right in here. Okay, I'm going to fiddle with the antenna here. Let's see if we bring it in. with the impression of my loop and oh what happened so I'm just started up okay don't know exactly what happened though. let's run with it it's a very weird interference sound I hear regularly in my shop just like you hear it now Well, this didn't work where the hoot. We'll go back to using the coil here. Oh, you know what? I disconnected the local oscillator when I did that. So we need this local oscillator hooked up. I'm not going to get anything. The impedance of the antenna is very low. So I, I okay, local oscillator is still operating. No tuning effect whatsoever. The local oscillator is moving fine. So this arrangement didn't work with the hoot. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I really hook up the local oscillator? So I would have hooked it up through this coil. Hmm. So I'm looking at the SDR screen. No local oscillator in this wire. Okay, so out of here, buddy. Local oscillator, but it's all tricky. Oh, that's interesting. It's still going. No antenna. Sounds like a radio. So we want to put the local oscillator and antenna signal. Oh, I just killed it. Or did it? And it seems like it can't get away from using that coil. Absolutely no. So, you know, the loop antenna is very low impedance, so it's just shorting everything out here. So we really need to drive this through this coil. This as a transformer. Way is the in, that I believe. I believe the normal way is coming here, coming here, and go out on these two. We have our choice of where to put the local oscillator. Okay, so we also have a choice of this. This could go to the ground.
Come on, impress us all. Good imagination. Let's assume that's a signal. It's quite possibly that 640 we're listening to. thing after another. Ah oh, man, imagine the people doing this back in the day, back back when LeCult and the others were operating on this kind of stuff with very limited instrumentation and uh, lots of things happening that they had no explanation for. It just must have drove them nuts trying to develop this stuff. Boy, they had a lot of fun. Where are we at here? Okay, um, local oscillator. Appears to be mixing happening because we're hearing stuff come out the far end. Is it possible we're not hearing an actual mixed signal coming out the far end? Uh, I don't think so. I think it has to be a mixed signal. The only thing I'm changing is a local oscillator. And what comes out the far end is... Boy, it just sounds like it's ready to receive. Why is it I'm un yeah, I, I was able to. Why did it go so quiet? The resonant point. I'm not sure. So the way that antenna is built, the pickup coil is uh, a single a single turn of wire. It's essentially a short circuit, so you know the impedance of this is extremely low. I've got it attached past a resistor. What if I attach it not there? Here. Not gonna make any difference, eh? Should be 640. I still have this tuning capacitor to work against this coil. I still got lots more to build up on the front end. I think I'm going to call it quits here today. I think we're really close to getting something out of this radio. And uh, what do we call it when it's done? We'll have to call it uh, Lindendine or something like that. Yeah, Lindendine. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I think tomorrow we'll have this guy operating, I think, uh, somehow. See ya.